Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're continuing on work with the Nanite slash inside ship destroying device. Still not got a name for it yet, but previously we looked at this design where it uses the rock glitch or um, sort of situation where it causes no damage to the actual pod, and then the pod actually sticks to the side, and then it starts to mine in or mine out from the middle, depending on how you attack with it. Now, the next stage of this weapon is using a Trojan horse method, and you guys like how I test things out on servers every now and then. So I got my friend who runs a sort of roleplay server to allow me to spawn in some random ships. Now, the reason for me spawning in some random ships was just to test out to see what players would do if they come across a fully functional ship. Now, out of the 10 players that I actually bumped into and they came across the ship, Two of them destroyed the ship, started shooting at it, blew it up. The other percentage of players came across it, took the ship, and then either returned it to their station, base, outpost, or even took it inside their ship. And now that's what I'm talking about. With this weapon system, we take advantage of them coming across a free ship. All that time that an effort that would have gone into them building it, it's already done for them. So if they take this back inside, these nanites will soon activate and start to cut their way out from inside. Very cool indeed, but we'll test that in a moment. Now, the alternative weapon system was to load this ship with one, so you could have a much smaller ship. Um, you could tuck this guy inside it, and this is a remote control version, so I could actually remote control and then go for one of their key valued assets, such as their regenerative sort of bays or cryo chambers or whatever. You can take them out and stop them from respawning and technically capture the ship because once them cryo bays and med bays are out of action in the ship you start taking out the power then you can board yourself and you have a ship within a couple of minutes especially if they're away mining or doing something else anyway let's test this guy out so let's begin the first test over there i have the hammerhead corvette link to it in the description below what i'm going to do is see what would happen if we bring this ship back to it say that was our ship and we found the ship out in the space and we bring this back inside our hangar. So what I've actually done is set these blocks to a one minute timer. So it should buy us a good amount of time. So it's going to be 10 meters before these guys actually start going off. And obviously Aaron has not set enough power I don't think in this ship. So let's see if we can actually get inside them hangars before anything starts to go a little bit crazy. So we'll start to see them tire blocks go off as we get a little bit closer. As they detect. So there we go. There's some of them activating. Of course the player wouldn't be able to see that on the inside and it is set to a minute so a minute should give them enough time to dock it but you could obviously say it for 30 40 minutes if you wanted to so let's see if we can get inside here we've actually locked our landing gear a little early let's see if we can get a little bit further in there we go perfect dock that inside there pop ourselves out and now that's set for a minute so i'll cut back when them guys actually go off to see what happens let's um attempt to also close the land the airlock up behind us so there we go the grinders have begun work away. Now, the only issue is if they grind themselves away. So, there we go. Some have exploded out the top. The roof, of course, would be on in that top area. The other ones are still grinding down the ship that they've made. Look at that. That's absolute carnage. This is what the sort of stuff I want. I want them to start getting into these little nooks and crannies of the actual ship itself and not really exit through the door. If them airtight door locks were actually closed as well, it would cause even more damage. Let's have a look what's going on inside here. So this has just cut the whole airlock away, and this one's just going havoc inside the reactor room. Perfect. This is, this is what I'm talking about when I talk about Trojan horse sort of strategy. So we've got these guys going mental in the back here. Especially if the player was away, if we'd set that timer for like 30 minutes or something, then by the time he'd come back, the amount of damage that would have ensued would be absolutely insane. And obviously it's quite clear that he's come out of this ship from the center. Let's have a look how this guy's doing further up here. Now he's just casually grinding away. He finds himself a new target over there, grinds that one away. Lovely. This weapon is extremely effective. This one's just grinding away the back, especially if your airlock is in the center of a ship like this one. You can see it's between all of the engine bays, so the amount of damage that these few little nanite type droids is going to do is going to be absolutely insane. This one's still grinding away in the middle. How's the one doing in the reactor room? Let's have a look. So that's cutting pipes out of the center. Just disconnecting all the power. This could technically cut off the whole ship's power supply and cause it to crash and whatnot. Anyway, let's attempt to clamp this onto the side of a ship to represent if a player doesn't have 
um, one. And we'll also close the roof up on it to see what happens as well. So for this second attempt, we're going to attempt just to take the ship up on top. Dock it like we would do, say for instance, if we didn't have a hangar bay. So by just clamping it to the ship because you'd be traveling through a different area. So let's pick um, a nice thick little spot. Actually, no, let's not. Let's pick a realistic spot where probably somebody would dock something. Maybe there on top of that or maybe clamp it to the hull. Let's just bring that down ever so slightly. And then we'll clamp that into that area. Bring it a bit more forward because I think the pilot would probably park it so it's a bit more centralized. So there we go. So we dock it. And the second thing we do is turn the power off so we don't need the power of the actual ship to function. So inside there... If everything's going well, then timer blocks should be activated and they should go off within a minute. Obviously, oh, there we go. You can hear them clicking away. Realistically, though, you would probably want to set these on a lot longer, maybe 10, 20, 30 minutes, so that the player could... I don't, actually, you might not want to set them that long. It depends if the player takes it back and starts grinding it down. Maybe 10 minutes after it arrives back at the station, set the sensors. I don't know. I'm still experimenting with this sort of thing, but when it comes back online... Oh, so there we go. They're online, and they're attempting to grind the way out. Let's see what happens here. Okay, please don't all come out the top. We need them coming out the bottom too. Okay, so there's a lot of them working their way out the side. Of course, some of them are going to get damaged by themselves, just grinding away. Let's see if any can get out the bottom or the side. Alright, looks like a few have been damaged inside there. Some are coming out the top. Is that one coming out the bottom? Okay, that one came out the bottom and then decided to go back in. Okay, that one's floating off. So if this attaches to the side currently, it looks like it's pretty useless unless one goes straight down. Let's see if any of them are going straight down. No, most of them are just popping out the top and flying off. So ideally, like a Trojan horse, it does need to be brought inside the castle to... Well, or the ship in this case to cause maximum amount of damage. Because at this current moment in time, all it's done is damage the inside of the ship itself. Not too many of them have got out. And the ones that have got out of them are just floating off up top. Let's see if them last two or three are going to do anything or they're just going to fly up into space as well. So there's the last one. Damaging the ship that is collected. And there we go, it drifts off. So current sort of state is absolutely useless if it doesn't get inside the ship. We'll do one final test on a different ship with a hangar located elsewhere. So for the final test, we actually have the Dark Star. Now, Aaron, once again, has not powered the ship correctly, unlike the last test where he added a few more reactors in there. So we're going to drift towards it quite sort of slowly <clears throat> three two one so ahead of us is the dark star it is more of a larger sort of carrier ship very beautifully detailed link to it in the description below but we're going to be testing the weapon system out on this so we're going to be traveling nice and slowly towards it towards the airlock where the sensor should detect us let's see if it detects us and opens up them outer airlocks hopefully uh, come on detect us and open oh no it's not detected it is it's not opened great so that means oh there we go it's detected us and now started to open up perfect we need to get ourselves inside there and start docking before things go horribly wrong with the internals of the ship maybe we should have set them a bit longer for this particular one so if we head inside here and we park ourselves maybe slap bang in the middle i don't think this size ship was really designed for in here okay that looks about good Maybe just smack that down somewhere like this. For instance, if we were docking it there. Okay, we need to find a suitable area to dock. Okay, I can hear them ticking away in the back. Okay, there we go. We're locked into position. Let's see what happens. So, that's a really bad docking procedure, Aaron. I think you're supposed to dock on these side areas. But that's not happened. We've docked in the center. So there's going to be limited room for it to escape. And we've got these large armor blocks here in the center. That's going to really make it a challenge. But anyway, I'll skip to it when these guys actually launch out. So here we go. It's So here we go. It started to grind down. The initial process of the guys actually trying to get out of there is beginning. Now, every time this happens, it's a little bit random. There we go. There's the first guy out starting to grind its way. The other guys are still stuck inside. It looks like that guy's going to try to maybe breach the cockpit glass. What else is going on inside here? So no one else has made it out. Only one of them has made it out so far. And he looks like he's going to try to make an escape out of the bloody airlock as it is. Okay, causing not too much damage in that section. Let's have a look what's going down here. Looks like maybe they've destroyed a lot of themselves. He is drifting around, causing random damage, doing some structural damage to a pillar there. While these guys are still trying to get out all different directions. Let's have a look what this guy's doing. He's going over to the airlocks again. He likes grinding down the airlock doors. All right, let's have a look what's going back over here. Okay, so one's actually looks like it tried to get out, tried to ground a hole through the floor. 
Yeah, there we go. We've got our first sort of floor breach as that one comes out around the bottom. That one is doing some more work in the airlock. Let's see if it goes for any vitals here. Okay, it's starting to go for some vital parts. But you can see the only issue is if I could get it to lock the landing gear every time it meets a new piece to grind, that would be great. But the problem is with this particular landing gear, it doesn't always want to function like that. Let's have a look at the back here. Oh, yes, we've got multiple grinders out now. If this player was away from this ship at this moment in time, that one's going down into the hull further. Oh, nasty bit of work going on there. That's cutting into there. Let's have a look at what's going on over here. This one's starting to cut down. So after a few minutes, they tend to get a little bit of a, a grab, especially with these ships with multiple layers. They start to curve down and work their way through multiple decks. So this one is actually going down to the lower hangar bay and it might actually exit the ship. Hopefully not. Let's go over to this side and see what's happening. So this one has cut itself, by the look of it, down and up and out of a shaft. Some serious damage going on here. You can hear the clunks and the sort of smashes going on. So one of them's got itself down into the hull. The other one I can hear grinding away over here. So they're doing a good bit of damage. And they're continuing to do it. If these turrets, of course, were on in here, they'd quickly eliminate them. So it's something to take into consideration. So I'm going to wrap that video up there. And I would like you guys to work out just how functional you think this weapon is in the comment section below. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And don't bring strange ships inside your own ship. It could end very badly.